I put it out. Too far, huh? But uh, I don't know. I'm not going to be here. It's much like a man. I'm going to be here. 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 And um, so the way that you understand it or the way that you should um, understand it is that it tells us the rules of what what we we do homo today. In the old government, long time ago, they used to have these um, these uh, houses in the community. They now we call them um, the um, the meeting house or the community house or whatever. But every community a long time ago, and all a lot of them communities, they used to have this one house that was, you know, that was the the meeting place, you know, and that's where the ceremonies were held and all that stuff. And uh, we call it Araski. It's a sacred uh, thing. Uh, we can use it uh, like you say, uh, um, what do you say, a gathering place where men used to go to meet and they would uh, talk in there and the no women allowed no women allowed because of the menstruation cycle um, and uh, but I know that there are there are some people that were telling me that in that uh, ski that women that were not yet menstruating the little girls that they they could go in there or they were allowed in there for a certain amount of time for different things and the women who passed their menstruation they're not menstruating anymore so that's something I think uh, you know that that matters in this, but it's called uh, many many names, Junki, Waki, but the one favorite name that everybody uses is the Oraski. So the Oras, Oras, when you say something in autumn, Oras, it's a sphere like a ball, like you get a ball in throw, and it, it's like like that. It's not just a circle, and we call it a roundhouse. But actually, it should be a sphere house, because <laughs> round is just round. But it's not like a ball, because you can make a circle, and that's round. So we call that araski in where I, you know, iya So who that uh, that araski? We um, <clears throat> we use it to um, to uh, again sacred things. Haichu masawa, as far as like the community, and our ceremonies are held. I mean, around that. Um, there was a time uh, my wife and, and there was a group that went up there to um, Casa Grande Desert Vista High School. And um, they were looking for the meeting place and they, they asked, I guess, at the beginning, at the going to the school, where the meeting was going to be. And so they said, oh, it's over there. There's a room over there. So they started going. And then they were asking the, the, the students uh, if they know or whatever. And they said, oh, yeah. And some of the autumn saying over there, the Olaski, Olaski. So they kept going and and then they, you know, like where's where's Olaski? And this, oh yeah, it's over there. They were telling. Her. So they finally got to this building, this room, and and in that room, they walked in there and there was a sign there and they read it and it said, Olaski, O L A S K I, uh, colon, Olaski, and they started laughing and they were saying. That's what those kids are trying to say, but they don't know enough about them, or they don't speak about them, so they don't know. They're saying, Olaski, <laughs> like somebody's name, but actually it's supposed to be Olaski. So that's what the, the thing is, and it's a meeting place, you know, it's a, a, a room, you know. And um, so that's like, a, and most tribes have something like that, a place where people go in to, to meet and or a courtyard or something. And uh, all of them we had that hickey, but the men again with wheat in there and they would talk about things. <clears throat> but um, there's a reason for that that house. They also call it the rain house, not the rain house, but the rain's house, like it belongs to the rain. And there's a story that goes along with that. And why we have those, um, those, those, those uh, houses and again it belongs to the rain or they call it the rain some people say wind and rain but so uh, what happens in this um, this story is that there's this and sometimes you know you, you think that when they say 
the coyote or the the, the buzzard or the um, the uh, snake or whatever that they're actually talking about the animal but sometimes in the story they're actually talking about human being that has that name so in this case it's that way so in the community there lived all these people <clears throat> and the and the rain and the wind lived there the the wind would go and run all over the, the land and you know you do stuff and make his magic and the wind would come sometimes when it was hot then the wind would blow a little breeze cool breeze and then other times um, uh, he would like make it real fast wind to like to help them out when they cleaned off their like certain certain um, um, crops that needed to be like the wind to blow away the, the, the leaves so that happened and to clean stuff off so he was a good help and the rain was in the community too and the rain and the wind lived together in this house they're they were brothers and so but the rain was blind the rain couldn't couldn't see like you could see a little you know like whatever legally blind he, he can't really see and so when it was time for the rain to do his work and the people needed their crops uh, rain on, on the water then the the rain would, would get uh, like a like a rope and then the, the he would give it to the wind and the wind would guide the rain and the wind would run and the rain would go behind him and then you know the rain would fall and it would make all this water you know the crops all you know all wet and so that was their job and they would go and you know different communities different things and all across the land so, <clears throat> so and they're medicine people either so one day they're um they the wind and the rain are um over there with these with these young guys you know the the guys always got together and they would talk about stuff and talk about, you know, and, and do little challenges, you know, I bet I can do this better than you can. I bet you can't do this in high, high uh, Chichui. Uh, they would gamble, they would rager. And so the, one day they were out there uh, at somebody's house and uh, the the leader of the community lived just right, right across on the other side. So, and the water hole is over there on that side. And they're sitting there because the rain had, you know, did his thing and so they were sitting there enjoying the cool you know cool breeze and the wind is there and they started challenging each other oh yeah <clears throat> they were sitting there and they saw this girl come out of the chief's house and they all looked at her and there she was like um uh, she had long black hair and she was she was agile and she was strong and she was, so they looked at her you know as kind of like a favorite and she wasn't married yet so they, they were they were watching her and then she was going but again you know you don't know about and, and about the men a long time ago were told to stay away from the women because of the menstruation cycle it could come any time and bit you know that, that it was a sacred thing that only women did and it would affect the men it would take away their power or their strength so you had if you're a good fast runner then you you did you know you tried to run and you couldn't run that fast um, just awaken, weakens a man when when a woman that is that is on her menstruation or coming to it, and they get too close. So the men were were not with the women, and so this woman's walking across, and they see her walking over there, and they know that's the chief's daughter, the leader's daughter, uh, with them. And so they say, um, well, they start challenging each other, and then they're they're uh, kind of saying like, I bet you can't do this, and oh, I bet you can't get her to be your wife, and all this stuff. And so finally they looked at the wind and the wind was sitting there and he was just kind of like, you know, listening, paying attention, being very respectful. And so they said to the wind, I hear you have a lot of good power. You're a real medicine person. I mean, you can make it wind and this wind that's coming, I, I, I bet you're a really good medicine person in the wind. So that's what they say, I guess. So he said, so one of them, the, the, the guy that's that there that wanted to challenge him, he said, I bet you can't, I bet you can't get that um that girl over there I bet you can't go over there and like make her her skirt go up you know I bet you can't get her skirt and push it up and you know just 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 from here your power and the wind was looking around and he said I'm not gonna do that that's the chief's daughter and um and a long time ago uh men wear this thing like uh like looks like a diaper and the women just wore uh wore a diaper also underneath but some of them didn't 
but they had just the skirt and they had nothing else on on top there was there was no top no no blouse no nothing and a nice warm day this girl's going over there she's going to get her water we got a water pot and she's walking over there and um so they tell him in the wind said no, i'm not going to do that and he said see and the guy looked at the other guy see i knew he couldn't do it he can't do it he doesn't have much power he's not that he's not a medicine person look at him he won't even do that and the and the wind kind of thought well i can do it and i'm not going to do it and he said oh i bet you can't do it so they all started you know telling him ah see you can't do that you can't do that you don't have no power you don't have no strength so the wind said but the chief's gonna get mad and the and the guys looked around and that guy that challenged him said if the chief gets mad and he comes over here and he says he's gonna do something to you then we'll tell him we'll tell him that we made you do it and so he has to do the same to all of us if he's gonna whip you beat you up whatever he's gonna do if he's gonna kill you we'll say you know oh no it was, we told him to do it and so the wind kind of looked around and, and the rain was just sitting there you know just sitting there looking down and kind of like oh, I don't know and so the wind said okay um, okay but remember you guys said you're gonna back me up and he said okay so he picked up some dust and he put it in his hand and he rolled it up and he went <gasps> and the dust span like that and it became a whirlwind and it kind of disappeared it was just kind of like a light whirlwind and it was just like you could see the the actions but you couldn't really feel it and it was moving and it started going towards that girl and that girl was there and she had her pot on her head and she was walking and um so the wind came that that whirl whirlwind came and it went under her and it lifted up her skirt and she she put her skirt back down and she dropped the pot and it cracked and she looked out there and they were laughing these guys were laughing and the wind was just looking at her and you know like well they made me do. and so the girl looked at them and saw them and she started running to her house and she ran to her house and she told her dad and that they were sitting there. Sure enough, here comes the father and he has his work club. Oh no, he doesn't have his work club. He's just walking and then he says to um to the to the guys that are sitting there, he said, um, um one of you did something to my to my daughter. He said and then he said, uh, I wanna to I wanna know which one of you did did whatever it was, you know. Uh, you did something to her and you hurt her. And you, you shamed her, so I want you to tell me who who did this. And they're all just looking around, and you know. And finally, you know that the wind um, that he said, "Well, um, I did it. I did it." And um, you know, I, I made her skirt grow up like that, and she was she was embarrassed, and she ran home, and and she kind of looked at the other guys, and the other guys were just sitting there, just looking around, like they were very serious, like they were very scared. And so the the wind uh, the, the the leader said, "Well, is that true?" And he looked around, and nobody said anything. And, and the rain and the wind are very honest. So the rain said, "You know, I I didn't see anything, but I I, I know that that's what happened." So they said, "Okay. So let's see. You know, like what 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 you can do." I said, "I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna get my work cup, and when I come back, I'm gonna use it against you." And the other guys were just sitting there like they were all afraid and and then the chief turned around and walked away and he started walking to his house and and the wind looked at those guys and said i thought you're gonna back me up and the rain said yeah you guys say you're going to and they were just laughing and laughing and laughing he said now he's gonna come beat me up you guys are gonna help me are you and they were just laughing at him so the wind kind of like said well he's gonna come beat me up or he's gonna kill me or something so i need to get out of here and the rain stood up and he said, well, I'm, you know, I can't see anything, so I might as well go with you. So he gave him the, the rope and the, the wind started running and the rain started falling. And they ran all the way to their house and they went in their house and they were in there sitting in there. And um, and they were saying, what, what are we going to do? He said, the chief was really mad, you know, he shouldn't have done that. And he said, I know, but I was challenged and I had to show off, you know, like I really had the power. And so they said, so what do we do? And the wind said, well, I'm going to leave. Uh, you can stay here if you want, but I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go far away. I'm not gonna be here. And the and the rain said, uh, "Well, no, you're my brother, and I'm blind. I can't do anything without you. So I'm gonna go with you." So the wind just kind of ran around the house real fast, picked up their tool stuff, and then put it in a you know a bag of him, and then gave it to the rain. And the rain took his part, and then he took off, and they ran out of the house, and they ran way up, and they went far away. And the chief came walking up to the guys and they, he had the war club and he said, where did he go? And he said, uh, I think he went home. 
So he went home and the other guys were just kind of looking at each other like, what did we do? But the rain and the wind ran away and the chief went over there and he looked around. He knew that rain and the wind were very fast runners. So he knew he couldn't catch them. So he just yelled out into the, into the, you know, in autumn, we believe that if somebody says something into the wind, that eventually it will reach the ears that it needs to get to. Maybe it'll take 20 years, maybe it'll take 10 days or maybe 50 years, but eventually the the message will get to the to the person that it, and he said, if you ever come back over here, I'm gonna kill you. And then he took his, his uh, war club and then he went home in the rain and the wind running way, way far away and they went far away. So for a while there, rain and the wind were gone and no wind, no rain, no nothing. The people started getting ready and they were planting their crops and they wouldn't grow because there was no rain. There was nothing to wet the thing down. It was hot and hot and hot. So the people just kind of stayed around. You know, you know, we can't do anything really because the, the uh, they're not here. You know, we can try to go get some water someplace. And by then, all the water holes started drying up. And so they were there. And they, um, the, uh, the people uh, started to ask around, where did they go, you know? Where's the wind and the rain? And so they said, you know, you need to, you need to um, get them, you know, come back. Where did they go? So they called the coyote and they asked the coyote, you know, can you go find, see where the rain and the wind are? And so the coyote said, oh, I'll try, you know, since you go around all over the place, you run all over the world and so go ahead. And so he took off, the coyote took off and he ran all the way around and he came back after a few days and he said, I, I didn't see them. I can't find them anywhere. They're just, they're just gone. And so they were, they were left with that. And so they called the other, some of the other birds and they're telling him, go find the, go find the, the rain and the wind. And so the birds went out and it took them a while and they all came back and they said, I don't know where it is. And then the little hummingbird was there and he was listening and he was, he didn't really fly that far because he's not real, like he doesn't have large wings. He doesn't fly, you know, as fast as they do. So, so he, he was listening to them and then he was kind of thinking, I wonder if I could find him, you know, find him. So he started to fly out and he flew out. And he went first to the east, and then he went to the north, and the south, and the west, and then after that he went back to the east, but he went further away, and then he came back and he went to the north, and he went further away, and then he went towards the south and went further away, and then he went to the e uh, the west and he went further away, and he came back, and each time he couldn't see them. And the next day he went further and further away to the east, and then further away to the north, and the south, and then the west. That's the autumn direction, our circle blessing. You always start in the east, you always end in the west. So they, he goes again the last time, he's going to go again for one more time, the fourth time, and he goes way to the edge of the world, and he to the east, and he, he comes back, and he, he can't find him. And he rests a little bit, and then he goes, and he, this is taking a number of days, it's not just like 20 seconds. So then he goes to the north and he's going way up there and he has his little feathers, you know, he's sticking up his feathers and he's, and he's way up there in the north and he kind of feels this little breeze and he's kind of thinking, wow, that feels cool. It's like a cool kind of wet. I wonder if I can, and he started following that, you know, he started following that wet, he was feeling it in his, his feathers. So he was going, 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 and then he started going, 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 and he kept getting closer and he got way up there. There's a place over there in California called Eagle Mountain. And we used to go up there. We used to wrestle with them, against them. And so um, over there, about 50 miles uh, west of Parker. And so um, we went up, the, he went up there and he was feeling that real cool breeze and he was going and then he suddenly see that all of a sudden it's kind of wet like a jungle. And he sees this piece of land and he's thinking, I found them. And so he flies back to the to the land, to the people, and the people are gathered there and they're still trying to figure out how are we gonna grow our crops? The only thing that grows is the bauk. And so they're 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 there and they're like, what do we do? And the, the hummingbird comes up and he and he tells the people, uh, I found them. I think I found them. They're they're way up there in, in, in the mountains. And then they're saying, Well, I, I, I know where to I want where to go. But the other the, the people said, Can you go back and 
Can you go call them? Tell them to come. Come back. We need them. We're, we're dying. You know, we're going to die pretty soon. There's no water. There's no, no wind. We need them. So the hummingbird said, okay. And then so he got ready. And the next day he flew out again. And he went for a number of days. And he went way up there to Eagle Mountain. As he's going and he's getting up to the to the wet places and he sees all the trees are green and then he smells that wet and he feels that wet and he keeps going that moisture is just real dark and wet and he keeps going and then he goes and he goes it's darker and darker and it's wetter and wetter and he gets this place and there's a cave there <clears throat> that cave is still there as far as uh, I've heard so he goes to that cave and um, he goes inside there and he's looking around and it's all dark and he sees this little fire grow in the middle. And he starts to go towards the fire and he's looking around and he's seeing, and he's, he's hearing this snoring. <laughs> and then he's looking and he sees these two men laying by the fire. And he recognized that it's the wind and the rain. And he goes over there and he's looking at them and then he says, what do I do? And he's trying to like wake him up, wake the rain up. And he's trying to push him and then he's just laying there and he's, you know, just, you know, just, that's really asleep. And so he's, he couldn't wake him up and he was trying to pull his hair and play with his nose and, you know, like open his eyes and he wouldn't wake up. So finally he went over to the, to the fire that was going there and there's Chewtuck, you know, the, the embers, the fire embers. And he goes over there and he picks one of those up in his beak and he goes over to where the rain is laying. And right there where the rain is laying, he throws it down his back, on his back, and tsh, all that steam just, tsh, just all flies off. And he then he goes over there and he's looking at him. The rain just kind of, kind of like turns around and kind of like puts his head and goes back to sleep. And then so the, 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 hummingbird goes over there and he does the same thing and he grabs that that another one of the embers and he puts it down his back and this time the rain kind of like <clears throat> kind of like kind of went like that all that steam and he's looking and kind of like and then he goes back to sleep again and so he goes back and gets another one look at those and he puts it on the his back again and <sharp inhale> all the steam and he's laying there and and, and the, the, the the rain kind of looks Oh, and he kind of turns around and he's looking. And he goes back to sleep. And then the last time he gets one of those big, big chew duck, you know, the big ember. And he takes it and he puts it down his back. That one's going to last a while. The whole cave, all this steam. And the rain is laying there, and he feels that, and he kind of opens his eyes and looks around, and he sits up and he's looking around, and he's kind of like, oh. and he's trying to do that, you know, but he can't really see that well, and he's looking, and he's shot the Joe, shot the Joe, looking around, stop, oh! yelling out, you know, asking, and so the the hummingbird flies up towards him, and then he tells him, you know. And, and, when you wait, so much, you know. When you want to come, much come, you know. They ask me to come. We not come, but now I'm going to buy more. Chop a more here. Better, better up them. What? Chop so that. I'm going to show them. Buy more to come back and help them out, the people. And the the rain is looking around and oh, oh okay. And he said, um, I can't do anything. I am blind. I'm half blind. I can't see. I need my brother to hold the money on them. So I can't do anything for you. I'm just here unless he takes me. So the the, the hummingbird goes over there and he gets one of those embers again the shooter, and he throws it down the wind's back, and, and it blows out right away. And the rain and the wind is just still asleep. And then and then he takes another ember and he throws it in his back and. You know, like the wind sleep with all that wind. And so he goes and he, he um, takes another ember and he throws it in his back again. And this time he gets up and he's looking around and he's kind of like, <sighs> it's kind of like, and the hummingbird starts to talk and he's, <sighs> and 
and then the hummingbird goes and he gets another one of those sandbirds that's a big, big, and he throws it down his back. And this time it goes for a long time. And the wind, wind like looking around him, looking around, he sees the hummingbird and he sees his brother sitting over there and he looks and, who are you? You know, that's a true. And so the hummingbird repeats the whole thing. It's like a long speech that he tells them, you know, come, 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 come to our land and be the wind, you know, you know, people are dying and all this stuff. So they, they're, um, he's there and he looks at him and he said, uh, he said, I, yeah, I'm not going to go over there. And the hummingbird said, that's your luck. And he said, because that chief, that chief, those guys, they made me do that thing and they never helped me out. They never backed me up. So that chief said he's going to kill me. And so what, what's going to happen if I go back? He's going to kill me. So I'd rather just be here, you know. I'm, I'm doing okay right here. Not going to... I'm not going down there. So the hummingbird kind of like, uh, don't know what to do. So he starts to go out and he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down and tell them. So he's just the messenger. Again, birds are messengers. So he goes down there to the people and he sees them and then he's, and he tells them, you know, like, um, he's not going to come. How come? He's not going to come. He said that, that the leader of the community is going gonna, is gonna to kill them. And the leader was there at that time and he looked around and he was kind of like, yeah. I'm gonna kill him because what he did to my daughter, he's not supposed to be doing that. And the um and the guys that were there, they, they finally owned up to it and they told the, the leader of the community, they said, Yeah, we did tell him, you know, that, that to do that. Um and, and he he showed us his power. But at that time, you know, we were afraid and so so the leaders kinda of like, Well, I guess it's been a long time, so I kinda of forgot about it a little bit, so but we need the wind and the rain, so so he told the hummingbird, go back and wherever you found them and tell them that they can come, come back. I'm not going to do anything. In fact, <clears throat> when they come to the community, I'm going to just go into my house and I'm just going to stay in there. And my daughter too, and we're just going to stay in there and, and when they can come and do whatever. And I'm not going to come out and just going to stay in there if they're afraid of me. Just tell them that not going to be there. So they said, okay, and the hummingbird flew all the way back. <clears throat> and the whole thing repeats itself while the while the rain is asleep and he throws the the coal down his, you know, the, the frog has chewed it down his back. And then the wind wakes up and then he says, they, they, he tells them, you know what, the, the, the chief said, it's been a while so he kind of forgot about it, but he's just going to go in his house and he's just going to wait in there. And those guys, your friends, the uh, that said they were going to back you up. They finally told him, yeah, that they were the ones that, that made you do that. So he said he wasn't going to do nothing, that they really need the wind and the rain. They need the wetness and the and the, wheeze, the breeze to, um, to you know, help them out. So they said, okay. You know, the, the, the rain said, uh, okay, I mean, they were here, but it's up to him. And so the wind said, yeah, I, I, I'll go, I'll go with you. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, in my money. And so the wind said, uh, but I'm going to come first. First, I'm going to go to the community and see how things are. And then I'm going to, um, and then I'll come back and get the rain. And then we'll both go down there and see, you know, and then, you know, we'll do what we our work, you know, keep good. So they said, okay. <clears throat> and so um, the, um, the hummingbird um, decided to go back. So they were going back and so they said, uh, he told the people and the people said, well, we want them to stay here like they were before. Remember when they were here before? We didn't have no problems to, to win. And we just tell them, you know, go to their house and knock on the door and say, hey, Tupo, ah, hope, you know, planted our crops. And then they will go and, and make their magic and, you know, things would happen. So they, they said, you know, we'll just do it like that. And so, um, but they said, the, the, peop the men there said, let's build them a house. Let's build them a house and, um, you know, a big house where, where they can come and they can live in there. So because the old house that they used to have, it's been a while and it's all knocked down. And, you know, the, you know, the elements have taken over and it's just kind of like almost all gone. So we'll just build them a new house in the center of the community or outside. That's kind of, and we'll make a big house so they can go and they can live in there. And when they see their new house and the Wato, they're going to really like it. And they're going to say, oh, we'll stay here, you know, you know, forever and ever. So they built that house and they were saying, you know, like, 
How long is it going to take them and the, the roadrunners that, uh, I mean the, so I keep saying roadrunner, the hummingbird said that, um, that I'm going to go over there and I'm going to uh, tell them and it's going to take me four days to get over there. And then another, you know, whenever they decide to come, they'll, they'll come. Maybe the next day, whatever. So the hummingbird started flying out back and the men made the made a house, a beautiful house, a big house, you know. Oraski. They made that house for them. And they put a wato there so when they're coming to the community they could see it. And so the hummingbird showed up over there and, and told them, you know, and then they said, Okay, we'll be up, we'll be over there. And so the people were uh, over there at the community and the hummingbird came back and they were waiting and then the hummingbird said, They're coming, they're coming. So after a, you know a few like a few hours, then they started to feel this breeze coming, and then breeze started getting stronger, and they were out there. It was so hot, and it was a hot wind, and then it started turning cool, and they were like, "Wow, it's he's here, he's here! The wind is here!" They were looking around for him, and the wind ran through the community. He just kind of like bring a like not, not a real strong, but a real good breeze, real good wind. And he ran through the community and looked around and he didn't see the leader there. So he ran through the community, he ran all the way back up to Eagle Mountain really fast. And the rain was all ready. He was all like just ready and he already had his, his rope out there. And so the, the wind came by and he grabbed the rope and he started to go and the, and the rain started to follow and they're both running. And they went towards the south way over there and then they turned around from the south and they started heading and the wind came first and that very first jugos came big jugos coming from the south and come coming up and they're and they're all like ah oh, there he comes that's the wind and they're, he's coming and coming and then he goes and then that jugos hits the community and they all run inside because again a long time ago we were told don't be in the jugos you know something might go in your eye all this other stuff is going to twist your bones so don't be in the jugos and but nowadays people just run out there for whatever reason so pass through and um and then um and then it turned around and went way on the other side and it picked up the rain and the people saw the jukos and it passed through and they all ran inside and when the jukos kind of slowed down there was that empty you know like nice and cool and so and they saw the rain coming go him go him and all the clouds and <laughs> lightning everything and it was coming and there's big drops of rain coming and they went and they started to go and they were coming through and the people said let's get some you know let's get some of the rain and so they went out there they got their pottery and they put it out there and so the rain came and they put it on the on top of their oh, um their wato. they put it on top of their house they put it on the ground and when that rain came it was just real big drop cold ground everything was wet and it filled up their 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 jugs, their ollas, their their pottery. And they got it and they took it and they put it in, inside their house to use. And so the wind and uh, the, the rain came <laughs> for a while all the way through and they saw their house there. But the wind, um the, the wind didn't didn't really, you know, like think, you know, whatever. And so the, the guy that the chief is inside the house and he's he's hearing all that wind and then he's hearing the rain. And him and his daughter are saying, we should go see what's going on. It sounds exciting. And so, and they went out there and they opened the door and they looked and they saw the rain and the wind. And when the, when the chief saw the, the um, uh, wind, he it brought back those memories. And the girl was sitting there and she started crying because she remembered what happened to him with the wind. Because since then there was no wind. So the chief got mad and he ran over and he got his, his uh, war club and he went outside and he started going out to find the wind. And the wind saw that and he just took off and the rain followed him and they went way up north and they went way back to Eagle Mountain. And then, um, so after that, the people had water. You know, a lot of uh, traditionalists too much still do that. I still hear families doing that, where when the rain, Jacobs comes and then the rain comes, They'll take a pottery, you know, like a Tupperware, you know, whatever, bowl or whatever, and they'll put it outside their house. And that rainwater that's pure, fresh from the sky, and it's not touched the ground. And it is like um, pure, pure, just nothing but water. There's no pure, no add additives. It's just pure water. They put that in a jar, and they'll use it for like maybe like um, 
when a woman's uh, menstruation comes uh, the first time and they use it in the ceremony or they'll use it um, like when the babies are born and their first very first hair wash they will use that rainwater and they'll wash their hair they use it as blessings they use it as different things you know when somebody gets sick they'll use that water they won't go over to get the water and like don't turn the faucet or anything they'll use that water because it's pure from the from the sky and so the people had their water but they also had all these water holes that are filled up outside now because the rain had come and so they noticed that the rain ran away so they sent the hummingbird again we be smart and he went up there and the hummingbird went and um and he um he found them again and he, he said what happened you know they had they built a house for you and they thought that you're going to stay in that house and the um the hummingbird um uh, was saying that puzzle you know the people are asking what happened and so they said uh you know we're there and i saw that chief come out of his house and he was still mad he still wanted to kill me so we just said we're not going to be there we're just going to leave and you guys can do whatever you want with the house maybe you can meet in there and tell your stories and all that stuff inside that house but you know you can keep it and and you know we'll go in there once in a while but we're not going to stay in the community and so the hummingbird came back and told them. So now he told them, now we have to sing songs. We have to do ceremonies so that the rain will come. They won't just show up on their own. We have to call them. So that's where the ceremonies and the rain songs were born. And most all the songs in the desert, even if it's for a, for a different kind of a ceremony, it all has something to do with the rain. They're all calling the rain, even just the personal songs or the drunk songs. Sometimes we talk about the rain coming. So um, that's why every community has a rain house, the rain's house, Oraski, inside, the, inside that community. Because of that story, the houses are built for the rain to come and live because the rain is sacred. But again, in, in that story, it says how the, how the rain's not going to live there because the chief is still mad at him. Mm-hmm. So whoever is your chief in your community, you need to go tell them, don't kill the rain, man. don't kill the wind. We need the rain. Mm -hmm. Well, I must come up to it again. Yeah.